And now uh, I will uh, uh, give the floor to Jean-Pierre uh, uh, Lablanchy, who is a uh, very well-known psychiatrist in uh, in Paris and uh, who has another uh, virtue uh, which says that he has educated me uh, a little bit on these uh, complex uh, on these complex matters uh, and thanks to him my mental uh, health is uh, is not as bad as it could have been uh, if I had not met him. <laughs> well, so uh, Jean-Pierre, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Thierry. Uh, first of all, uh, this question, are, you, are we facing a global international problem? My answer is yes, because this is called human condition. And first, I would like to thank Alexandra Perrieux because she said uh, what he thinks about uh, medical education and this uh, very poor field called psychology. I fully agree with that. And I agree with uh, Jean Cramartz when he said behavior is a key point. Trust is very important. I follow Roberto for the same reasons. And I would add that we are facing people in a regression because of the fear. Uh, they are living with. And these people are weaker than usual. And in this kind of progression, you can be uh, like brainwashed by, by some dogma, whatever it is. And we, we know that for, for years now. Uh, thanks to His Excellency Tedros, because he said something so important. We have to invest. And thanks to Michael too, uh, especially when he said that mental health is a somatic disease too. And I will try to, to point that in this uh, little speech because to speak about psychiatry in 10 minutes is quite a challenge. So the question is to protect some uh, at-risk people and this morning, we understood all that elderly and comorbidities, comorbidities uh, affections are very important and the main risk should be to old people. On this point, I would disagree because what we see uh, as a consequence of this uh, COVID-19 huge wave is this mental health problem. Remember, suicide is the second cause of death in young people. 16% of deaths between 15 and 24 is caused by suicide. 20% of deaths in the 25 up to 34 in age. So depression kills. It's not only the virus. So I will argue about three major tests. One is very famous, ancient, and uh, inexpensive. And two of them are more recent. And uh, I would like to, to make you understand that we could invest in that field. These tests are producing data. So, what is the link between uh, this uh, COVID-19 wave, depression and addiction? 39% of people have experienced a relapse of their addictive behavior since lockdown. On the national scale, this may mean that more than 1 million people have experienced some form of relapse during the lockdown. It's a complex interplay with the financial difficulties, social isolation, uncertainty about the future, and the redistribution of the health workforce and the disruption to 
clicker services. This leads to an increased alcohol intake and relapse under lockdown. I have to explain this link with uh, addictions. Addictions to psychoactive substances is expressed in the dependence syndrome. No single etiological factor for why some people use drugs and others do not. Why part of them becomes dependent, we don't really entirely know. This must be a combination of psychological, biochemical, genetic, and environment factors which play a role. Studies describe this function in the central nervous system of substance dependence that may also negatively influence the functions of their ability to process sensory information adaptively. There are four problematic personalities. Hopelessness, anxiety, impulsivity, and sensation seeking. We call that sensory proce processing disorder or SPD, which is frequently related to, to these uh, personality uh, traits. SPD is characterized by over or under responsiveness to environmental stimuli. People found in these patterns of over responsiveness to, due to their low neurological are frequently described as irritable, moody, express poor socialization. SPD is frequent comorbidity of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, ADHD, and emotional disturbance. This explains why SPD is among substance dependence. This includes decreased dopamine uptake, altered dopamine synthesis, and deficits in serotonin reuptake sites. Some people seek for addictive substance as a compensatory mechanism for their unmodulated arousal level or for relief of a particular affective state. Individuals with sensory hypersensitivity showed hyperarousal mechanism, enhanced sympathetic nervous system reactivity, and elevated activity of brain areas associated with hyper-emotionality. This is very important. We will see that on the brain scans. The, this hyper-emotionality provided an explanation for their anxiety, depression, irritability, and so forth, and they are seeking for drugs. I will introduce a friend of mine, Rachel Yuda. She's the psychiatrist for the firemen in New York. So remember 9-11. She made some very interesting uh, research showing that this kind of specific depression is a somatic disease. She proved first that a huge stress producing a PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, affects the cortisol receptors. So you cannot behave like before. She said from someone who was under a cataclysmic uh, event are saying they are not the same as they, they, were, they were before. And the explanation for that is that this shock can destroy the the gene, some genes activities. This is called epigenetic. If you go to internet and you type uh, epigenetic and psychiatry, you, you will see thousands of uh, publications in this field. So 
First, we have genes. I will come back to that. And second, these genes can be uh, hampered by a huge, huge stress. What she said too is that uh, this kind of uh, aggressions is uh, is to be is can be is to transmitted to the, to the next generation and maybe the next two or three generations. It happens. These patients are comorbid with substance abuse, self-destructive behavior, and medical illness. As a somatic disease, uh, there is a test we can do. First is to check cortisol in the urine. urine. Second is to make a blood test called dexamethasone surf suppression test. It means that a very low amount of dexamethasone kills your production of cortisol. This means you are under uh, PTSD. This is a very technical but very precise somatic point. What is PTSD? First, it it lasts more than one month. And people would re-experience the symptoms of the bad uh, feelings. You have nightmares, flashbacks, repetitive and distressing images or sensations, physical sensations such as pain, sweating, feeling sick, trembling. Some people have constant negative thoughts about their experience. They try to avoid this emotional learning. They try to avoid being reminded of the traumatic event. Usually they go and uh, turn to be isolated and withdrawn. The main treatment for psychological uh, post-traumatic stress is uh, psychological therapies. I just mentioned cognitive behavior therapy or CBT. I mentioned uh, eye movement desensitization and reprocessing or EMDR, which is a very good technique we use in case of, uh, of big stress. Uh, we, we use that for years and it works very well. You can use medications. First, beta blockers, you use beta blockers to to make the debriefing because people otherwise would re-express the trauma and the pain. Uh, this trauma this is a somatic pain, it's very painful. So you use beta blockers to help people uh, do the debriefing, which is a technique to take care of uh, post-traumatic stress disorders. You can use antidepressants, uh, paroxetine, sertraline are uh, agreed for uh, treatment for PTSD, but you can use some other treatments. Something very specific to uh, this uh, coronavirus uh, wave. Uh, this is what said the Professor Marion Leboyer. Some US publications did exactly the same observations. Uh, it seems that there is a protective effect against directly the coronavirus of certain drugs widely used in psychiatry, especially antidepressants, anxiolytics, and even antihistaminics. This was done in Henri Mondeur Hospital. What was the consumption of uh, psychotropic drugs during the COVID period? It increased. Uh, for the first wave, we've seen an increase of 18.6% of anxiolytic uh, use. So same for um, antidepressant. Now I will uh, try to explain what we can do, I mean, on a large scale. As I said, psychiatry is not very 
not a very well-known discipline in the medical field, and psychology less. So this test called the Minnesota Multiphasic Personality Inventory is the interest uh, psychological test. It began in the 40s. It's the most published psychological test. It's very accurate and we can use it especially with uh, uh, to deal with psychological stability, for instance, for workers in at high risk. But there, everyone was at high risk. This test is very easy to, to do. Uh, you have 330 questions dealing with hypochondria, depression, hysteria, psychopathic deviate, masculinity and femininity, which uh, with paranoia, psychasthenia, schizophrenia, hypomania, and so forth. It, it shows uh, like a scheme where you, you can see easily that when you are all in the blue uh, situation, everything is okay. So you just point out the points which are out of this, uh, of this scheme. You have many of them and it's very accurate. So after this uh, explaining what, very briefly what is this uh, psychological test. The second point is to, to go to, to brain spec imaging. This is more expensive, but this is very accurate. And I want you to, to, to see some pictures to, for you to understand this is a somatic disease. It's not uh, state of mind, it's not an impression, it's not an emotion. So we have now this kind of tools mixing at the same time a PET scan and a, a, an MRI. And when you do the integration of the pictures, you can see the metabolism, mostly the metabolism of uh, neurological cells. So you you can see functionally how the brain works. So here on the left, you have a normal scan. On the right, you have a scan for, pe for people taking drugs. This is an addicted brain scan. At the top, you see what, how is uh, this kind of scan for marijuana users. Then you have the effect of long-term use of heroin. As you can see, the pictures are not the same. Then you can see what's, what's doing methamphetamine and then alcohol use. So as you can see, we can now figure out what is the result of the use of a drug in terms of functional and uh, and it's a somatic disease then, it's not an impression. So alcohol with drugs at the top, and then effect of heavy nicotine and caffeine abuse. The third point is that now we can use genetic as a preventive test for emotional instability. These tests are now used for something like 10 years. And what you can see is how you were born with some genes which, uh, which were, were not functional. Who do you test? Mood disorders, anxiety and impulsiveness, sleep disorders, fatigue, suspicion of depression, impaired concentration and hyperactivity. Just to remember you that uh, it deals mostly with two main uh, hormones called serotonin and dopamine. Serotonin is like a break and dopamine is like an accelerator. So these are examples of mutation. We should have nine lines 
in black, which means nine functional genes. The first one, you have three genes mutated. The second one, you have four of them. The third one, you have eight of them. And the last one, nine and nine. Frankly, I did not know this would exist. This was the first time I met this kind of result. Uh, this makes a catastrophic life. This is important for many reasons to, to do this kind of test because it helps the, the psychiatrist to explain the patient should take a treatment. Because this last person with nine on nine mutated genes refused absolutely to take any kind of drug. And I had to explain with this kind of situation, I cannot do anything with just using psychotherapy. This guy accepted at the end to take this treatment and then is very, very uh, in a better condition. Other interesting point is that when you can explain that to patients, it means they were born like that. They have to deal with it all their life long and try to, to live much, much better. And this is not the, the parents' fault. This is not the education. This is not uh, uh, the environment. This is, for them, this is a genetic problem. I have to say again that these are genes at the origin, but some of normal genes could be uh, hampered by shocks and with epigenetic modifications. So to conclude, there is a third wave, which would be a mental health wave, said our Minister of Health, Mr. Véron. What I would like to, for conclusion, to say is that in facing this difficult human condition, this huge suffering with a very high risk of disease killing people, first, we have tools. First of all, we have to explain to people that dark thoughts never, never are normal. If you feel this kind of kind of thought you have to call someone, for instance, a clinician, a psychologist, a psychiatrist. Second, we can use very easily this kind of test I described. I just described one, there, there, there are plenty of them, but this one is very useful and very well-known test. It takes one an hour, uh, by phone, at a distance, or whatever, to make a, a diagnosis much more precise than the impression of a psychiatrist, of a clinician. Second, you can use genetic tests for educational reasons. And third, medical imaging is just incredible. We made extraordinary progress, and this gives data for some kind of Somatic disease, I insist. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jean-Pierre, for this uh, uh, brief course on uh, psychiatrics. <laughs> uh, it's extremely interesting.